we are uh, going through a series, if you've been with us for the last few weeks, about being refreshed. I felt like the summer was a great time to get refreshed. And uh, there's one thing to be refreshed in the body, but we can also be refreshed in the spirit. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But I want to ask you the question this morning, what do you reach for uh, when you need to be refreshed? For some of you, it's just a nice ice cold glass of water. How many want to raise your hand for that one? Man, there's just nothing more refreshing than water, right? Okay. Uh, for myself personally, it's either uh, an ice cold diet unsweet tea with a twist of lemon. We got any takers on that one? Three, four, five. Okay, all right. Thank you for that. Thank you for participation. How about an ice cold Coke Zero? Because they're kind of neck and neck for me on what? Anybody Coke Zero? Coke Zero once, twice. All right. Uh, four of them. Great. Fantastic. Thanks for playing. How many of you for a cold glass of beer? Yeah, okay. I, I knew we'd get some more of them with that one going on. Yeah. Uh, I have a story I think I might have shared with you before, and I have. I'm getting older, so please forgive me. I'm going to share it with you again. But when we were visiting with my sister-in-law down in South Florida a number of years ago now, uh, we had visited a number of times, and our son John, who was about four at the time, had made a little friend across the street. And so we came down, we're visiting, and John wanted to go over and see if his friend could play. And we said, sure, go ahead. So he went across the street. Turns out the little boy was spending the night somewhere else. And so John spent a few moments with the dad in his garage. The dad had just finished mowing the lawn. And John said, so what you doing? He said, well, I'm just finished mowing the lawn and I'm real hot and thirsty. So I'm just sitting down and having a nice cold glass of beer. John thought for a moment and said, you're not supposed to drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and, the, and the man said, well, you know, I don't, by the way, we don't condone going into a man's garage and telling him what he can and cannot do. Okay, I'm just saying that, you know, and apparently we had shared with him our beliefs about drinking. And so we, we personally stay away from it, but we don't put that on anybody else. That's a personal family decision that we make. And, and so apparently we had shared our views uh, with John about drinking alcohol, but we did not share the description of where you share that information. And, uh, but what I am glad to see that at four years old, John came up with grace all by himself. Can I get an amen to that? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's many different ways that we can get refreshed. In uh, the Scripture today, the Apostle Paul comes up with one other way, and that's by drinking wine. Do we got any wine takers here? Okay, yeah. Uh, some of you are raising your hand for you, aren't they? It's like, yeah, yeah, we, we got some winers here. Um, but Paul actually makes a contrast between being refreshed in the body and being refreshed in the Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you've been reading along with us, if you've noticed we've been going through Ephesians 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 today, uh, you have to read 6 all by yourself because we're starting a new series uh, next week. But in Ephesians chapter 5, early on in this passage, Paul had warned about sexual immorality. I have in my notes here in parentheses, it's still a thing, by the way. Uh, you would never know it by the society in which we live. Um, but honestly, we still serve the same God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If it's wrong back then, it's still wrong today. There's an appropriate place and time for these things. Now, he spoke out against any form of impurity or greed. And he goes on to discourage obscene language, foolish talk, and coarse joking. Now, many of you know I like a good joke now and then, but sometimes, God bless you, you'll, sir, you'll share a joke with me that's funny, and I can't share it from the pulpit. And I'm going to ask you now, please use your discretion, because if you share a joke with me that's not appropriate from share from the pulpit, the older I get, the thinner my filters get, and it's going to come out, and it's not going to be pretty, okay? So do me the favor, and don't pass it along. But then maybe just then, even with this understanding and saying, if I can't share it with the pastor, if we can't share it from the pulpit, maybe just maybe... Even if it's funny, we shouldn't be sharing it with anybody else. That's quite a list, though. And in our passage for today, Paul adds, not getting drunk, 
to the list. I won't ask you to raise your hand for that one. But it just seems like in the church, a lot of times we talk about what we can't do. Can't do this, can't do this, can't do that, can't do this. You know, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. It's like, oh my gosh. Well, what can we do? Well, if that's you today, God bless you. I am glad you're here because Paul's going to tell us what we can do. And so we're going to take a look at our passage for today. It's Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Paul writes, be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to the God for the Father for everything In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. So what's the Apostle Paul saying here? He's saying, and the key to it right now is found in verse 15. He said, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So what, do you think this is something that was only true 2,000 years ago? Is it culturally irrelevant? By now, people have been Christians for 2,000 years. Um, So we're all pretty good, right? Yeah, not so much. That's why we need to keep coming. That's why we need to be here. But what he's doing, he's making a contrast between the thinking of the world and the thinking of God. And he's saying very clearly to us still today, the truth still rings true with us, is saying you can't just do whatever you want and say, that's okay, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, I'm covered by the grace of God, and I'm okay. Do you know what he says? And he he talks about this in 1 Corinthians. Um, Let me flip over there real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 20. He says, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? He's talking to the church. He's saying, do you not know that the wicked, the people who continue to do these things even after being saved by Jesus Christ, he's saying, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were but you have been washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. He's saying that was your old life. Every one of us here, if you find yourself in this list and you say, you know what, that was my old life, that is my past, but we need to leave it in the past. (laughs) May the ones who follow us find us faithful. We have children and grandchildren who are watching us and watching the way we talk and watching the way that we live. I've been encouraging those who have been coming for baptism is to say Christianity is caught rather than taught. It's not do as I say and not as I do. We have to live it out by our actions, by what we're doing. And if there's anything in holy in us, then we need to get it out of us. Verse 11, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach and stomach for the food, but God will destroy them both. We weren't made for this earth. We weren't made to live here forever. Food is temporary. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about what you'll eat. Don't worry about where you'll sleep. Don't worry about what you'll... Those are all temporary things that the world runs after. 
And he said, food for the stomach and stomach for the food, and God's going to destroy them both. But the good news is we get new bodies, improved bodies, better bodies for those who inherit the kingdom of God. And he says this, he says, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in the spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple? Let me ask you a question this morning. How's your temple? What are you putting into it? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? But I want you to hear this. It's highlighted in my Bible. I hope it's highlighted in yours. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, what's happened in our society today? We live in a culture, and even in the church, we are being swayed by popular opinion. If enough people say it's okay, then it must be okay. If if a lot of people are doing it, then, yeah, what the heck? We should be able to go ahead and do it too. And I want to ask you, what is your worldview If you have a secular worldview, then you are absolutely right. My father-in-law was career army, and he was famous for saying, I fought in three wars to give you the right to disagree with me. And I appreciate that. I appreciate all those who came before us, all those who were willing to give of their lives and lay their lives down so that we could be here in freedom and peace and truth. But what's happened in America is that we just feel like everybody has an opinion. And listen to this, because this is what's happening. And we think everybody's opinion is equally valid. If you have a secular worldview then you're absolutely right. You should be able to eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow you're going to die. You came from oblivion, you're going into oblivion. But if you have a God worldview, when you believe that God created the heavens and the earth, he created everything for us, and he's created a heaven for us to move into to be with him forever and ever and ever, in a place of light and love and joy and peace and happiness forever and ever and ever. If you think you're going to die and go into oblivion, then do whatever you want. Be free. We don't even have to be here at church anymore. But if you have a God worldview, then only God's opinion matters. Can I get an amen? Only his opinion matters. If God's not real, nothing matters. But if God is real, he's the only thing that matters. Now, let me give you a a strange illustration. You'll be talking about this at lunch today. (laughs) Maybe not. (laughs) Um, But Ravi Zechariah, somebody was asking him about, you know, the worldview and God worldview and And he said, if you don't trust in God, if you don't believe in God, then you can do whatever you want. But he said, listen to this. Many people think there there is a moral law giver. If there's a moral law, then there must be a moral law giver. He said, otherwise, it's anything goes. And he used this illustration. If you don't like it, talk to Ravi, not me. But he said, in some parts of the world... It's culturally appropriate to invite your neighbors over for dinner. 
You know, you have a neighbor comes into the neighborhood, house has been vacant, now there's a new family in there, you want to get to know them, you want to do the right thing, and so you invite them over for dinner. He said, in some parts of the world, it's appropriate to invite your neighbors over for dinner. In some parts of the world, they eat their neighbors. (laughs) Do you hear that? And you say, oh, that's just silly. Well, not to a cannibal, it's not. You know, how many of you remember Jiminy Cricket? (laughs) And always let your conscience be your guide, right? Maybe that sounded more like goofy, I don't know. But you can't let your conscience be your guide. In fact, the, the, the guy that was questioning Ravi said, do you trust your own opinion? He said, absolutely not. That's why I have to be redeemed. I have to be changed, I have to be transformed to become more like him, to become more like Christ. If a cannibal goes to bed at night and they've just had their neighbors for dinner, then I, here, here, yeah, I'm gonna take it one step further, okay, for you. Um, You know, I don't think they go, you know, I think we need to get down and pray because I just don't feel right about this whole thing. I don't think we should have eaten our neighbors, you know. No, I think they get in bed, they're picking their teeth and said, you know, the wife was delicious. (laughs) But the man, he was a little stringy and tough, you know. Yeah, I, I don't think it bothers their conscience at all. And, and I'm, yes, I'm making an extreme here so that you begin to ask the question, who do I care more about? Is it my opinion that matters? Is it my moral law? Or does it come from another source? If there is a moral law, then there's a moral law giver and it behooves us to find out that moral law giver and live life after his pattern and not my own. Can I get an Amen. We are not out to change God's opinion. Submission is about accepting his opinion. The world complains and says things, well, I like to get drunk. I I want to be able to have sex with anyone that I want. What's so bad about an occasional dirty joke now and then? If you are an American, you are free. But if you are a Christian, remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 through 20. He said, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. And here's what I fear what happens when we we put on our happy faces to come to church and we we put on our nice clothes to come to church and and we don't talk about coarse things or joking or or bad language when we're at church. At least I hope you don't. You know, it's like if you can't be right anywhere, be right at church, people. Come on, you know. But the, the fact is we're supposed to be the same at home. And here's what I think we do when we keep doing these things that we know that we're not supposed to do is we're making, listen to this, a mockery of the cross. Now, many of you, you you don't like to think about Jesus. You don't like to watch the passion. It's too real. (laughs) Don't you think for Jesus it was pretty real? To endure the beatings, to endure the torture, to be nailed innocently to a cross and left there until he died so that we could be forgiven. He took the weight of the world, the sin of the world, so that we could be forgiven, that we could have grace and that we could live life free. We as Christians are not free to do whatever we want to do. Here's what Jesus freed us from and says, when you are freed in Christ, you are freed indeed. And we are freed from the power of sin. If sin wasn't tempting, then nobody would do it. It is tempting. And and what tempts me may not tempt you, and what tempts you may not tempt me. They're all different, but they're all wrong, and they're all bad. And I guarantee there's somebody here this morning that's getting this message and saying, you know, I've been trying to straddle the world and godly views. I've been trying to be able to make excuses about my bad behavior, about my bad thoughts. I want to be free. I live here in America. I want to do what I want to do. Why do you think God tells us what is sin? It's not some arbitrary rule He says, because sin takes you farther off the mark. It it takes you out of 
the good life. And as a parent, if you want the best things for your children, how much more a holy God wants for his children. And so, he, and, and, and the scripture says, we're, we're going to have a series in Proverbs. And it, but, it, but it says that if you train up a child in the way they should go, they will not depart from it when they get older. But it also says this, he says, God disciplines those whom he loves. If you as a parent do not discipline your children, they're going to grow up wild. They're not going to grow up knowing values and morality and saying no to the temptations of life, but living for Jesus Christ. And if we want it for our children, then how much more should we be teaching them as an example? Christianity is caught more than taught. It is not do as I say, it is do as I do. The apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And as your high and holy pastor, I say to you, follow Paul as he follows Christ. <laughs> I'm not that great, but I'm trying. I I'm working on it. I'm, I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm trying to do better. So, and maybe some of you guys have heard this. Uh, maybe on a television show, if not at home, uh, somebody's using coarse language and somebody looks at him and says, do you kiss your mama with that mouth? <laughs> and as a Christian, you could say, do you praise your God with that mouth? Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, it's not what goes into a man that makes him dirty. It's what comes out of a man. And you go, wow, man, I, I've tried to hide it from the rest of the world and I realize that God's everywhere and God's even in me and he knows everything that's yucky about me. He knows all the bad stuff. So what am I supposed to do? Somebody said, what am I supposed to do? Oh, that was weak. Come on, people. This goes a lot faster if you participate. What am I supposed to do? Thank you. Glad you asked. We can go to lunch soon. All right. But he says right here in verse 18, he says, be filled with the Spirit. My own prayer is that the last few years that I can possibly remember is, Lord, I need more of you. I need you on the inside of me. I open up my heart, find anything that's impure in me and get it out. Purge me of all the stuff that's inside of me so that I might be a shining light for you. I want more and more, and I pray that that would be your prayer as well, to invite the Holy Spirit. He, Paul says to be filled, not with wine. Don't get drunk. Don't do all these things that all the rest of the world does, but be filled with the Spirit. The only way is to allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse everything unholy out of us. He goes on to say that we should surround ourselves with other Christian people. We are called to pray for one another, to encourage one another, to make music in your heart, to say thank you to God. Can you go out and sin and then turn around and say thank you to God? It's like, no. So if you spend time thanking God, if you spend more time, you, you kind of heard it said you are who you eat. You, no, that was a cannibal one. Um, you are what you eat. It's the same thing. You are who you hang with. Do you hear that? You ever heard somebody's mama say, well, the only reason my, problem, my son got in trouble is because he was hanging with the wrong crowd. But every mama said that about their child that got in trouble. Somebody's got to be the wrong crowd. Question I want to ask you is, are you hanging with the right crowd? Look to your left, look to your right. Hopefully, you like your crowd. <laughs> and if not, you may want to change seats. Apple turnover, right? We all go the different way. Yeah. But that's what we're supposed to do is to hang out with the people that we want to be more like. You need to find somebody that you respect, somebody of authenticity, somebody who knows God's word inside and out. And can I tell you that God's word is still faithful, is still alive, is still true? Do you think this teaching was only 2,000 years ago or do you think we still need to hear it today? We still need to hear it today. The world is trying to tell us what's right and wrong. And the only place that we should be going is right here to God's word and saying, God, what do you think? Not what does the world think? 
And, and for a long time, Israel was the remnant. And of Israel, there was only a few people who had not bowed their knee to Baal. Sometimes it feels like we're going against the crowd. Sometimes we're, we're going against the tide. It just seems like everybody's coming at us and the world opinion has taken over. But Jesus is saying, you need to stay strong for him. You need to know his word. Do you know that this is the, the best-selling book of all time and one of the least read? Did you get that? Yeah. Best-selling book of all time and one of the least read because Satan has told some of you, you can't understand it. You have no way of getting it. You have no way of understanding. Who do you think you are? Just put it on your coffee table. It'll be good there. But no, we have to get into God's word because the more we read God's word, then he fills us up from the inside out and we will be able to test the spirits. We will be able to know what is right and what is wrong. Can I get an amen? amen. Philippians 4, 8, and 9 says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, praiseworthy, think on such things. And the God of peace will be with you. Spend more time with God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he will help you overcome any temptation and will guide you into holy and righteous living now and forevermore. My prayer for you this day is that you would be filled and refreshed by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen.